Good day everyone, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this broadcast in the Free Math Worksheet series. This week we're looking at reading analog and digital clocks. I'm going to point out first up um, the different spellings of the word analog, so I don't want anyone to be offended by me spelling it differently from the way you spell it. But in the United States, of course, you stop at the G, but for those of us in other parts of the world, we usually add the UE as well. Anyway, that's not really important. So we're looking at time measuring devices for measuring the time of day, and we have two different sorts. Now, I don't know what you thought, but in about the 90s, when digital clocks were uh, very hot items and seemed to be just popping up all over the place. I had a couple of different digital watches at about that time. It appeared to me at least that anal analog clocks would pretty soon disappear and we'd all be using digitals, but clearly that hasn't happened. Um, analog clocks are still being sold in the shops and so it may be that it's there's something about the, the analog clock and the, the movement of the hands that we find Perhaps it's just the familiarity, or maybe it's just it's easier for us to recognize the time of day by glancing at the, the hands. I don't know. Again, that's not terribly important. The important thing to note, the important thing that we need to teach our students is that the clock measures the passage of time using two different units. Now, there are actually three, of course, but we'll concentrate on the two main ones, and that is the hours and the minutes. And so there is a, what we often call the shorthand, or more accurately should be called the hour hand, measuring the passage of the hours during a day. So we could say to our students in an early sort of lesson, how many hours are there marked off on the clock? If we have it marked like this, the numbers go up to 12, and that is the 12 hours. How many hours are in the day? Of course, there are 24. So we can deduce it from that that the hour hand goes around the clock twice during the day. Then we have a long hand, or again there's a better title, the, I'm not writing that very neatly, the minute hand, which marks off the minutes. And so between the markings for the hours, we have another set of markings, of course, that show the minutes. And obviously the minute hand is going around much faster, and so we will teach our students that there are 60 minutes in an hour, and so the minute hand is going more quickly. I'll just draw in briefly the other hand, which of course is the second hand, and that marks off seconds as well. We don't need to worry about that at this point. So the device, the analog clock, is a complicated device. As adults, we've got used to it, but children, it's no wonder they find it rather confusing because it's measuring two different units with two different hands and they keep going round and round, you know, repeatedly. It's not like measuring a length of something where you measure it once and, you know, you can see how long it is. With a clock, the minute hand repeatedly comes past the five and every time it does, it's a different time because the number of hours has changed and so on. And so we have to help our students to understand these two parts to the measurement of time. So let's go back a bit and talk about the digital clock in conjunction with the analog clock. Obviously we're going to start with the, the hour times, the o'clock times. So we'll have our minute hand pointing at the 12, and then we'll have the hour hand pointing at the number of hours. I believe it's valuable for our students to see the two together. The thing about the digital clock is it's more straightforward in its presentation of the hours and minutes because they don't cross over each other and so on the way the, the hands on an analog clock do. They simply show a number for the hours and a number for the minutes. Um, and of course we can label this for our students. But that makes it relatively straightforward. It's more like reading uh, numbers as they get bigger. It's like reading the measurement of something else. Uh, using just standard base 10 numbers because the numbers get progressively bigger and this is the greatest value and so on. It is still complicated because obviously the seconds only go up to 59 and then they click back to zero again, so it's not a standard uh, base 10 number. But if we can put these two clocks together, 
So if you had a clock like this, or you had two clocks in your classroom so that you could illustrate to students the way this one shows the time is different to the way this one, but that, you know, they're both showing the same time. I think that would be valuable. Obviously, after we've done the o'clock times, then we do the quarters, quarter past, half past, and quarter two, and we should link that with fraction teaching that the students have had so that they understand what a quarter means. It's a fourth part of something. Um, and this is a fourth part of an hour and so on. And then eventually, once the students are familiar with that, of course, we'll go on to individual minutes and we will help them read the number of minutes around the clock based on uh, the position of the minute hand. There's a connection here which we can make to the five times table, which might be used to help students learn their five times table or if they already knew that, it might help them learn the times on the clock. I'll show you what I mean. When the minute hand points at the three, we know that's 15 minutes past the hour. When it points at the five, as another example, it's 25. At the 10, it's 50. Now, each of those numbers and all the others is in the five times table. And it's equal to the number of hours multiplied by 5. So at the 3, 3 fives are 15, that is 15 minutes. At the 10, 10 times 5 is 50, and that's the number of minutes. So obviously that's because there are 12 hours located on the clock, and there are 60 minutes, and 60 is 12, uh, 12 times 5. All right, so that's just another little thing that that uh, can be mentioned to students. So this is a topic that will take some time for, for children to develop familiarity with and become secure and confident in reading time. But I think we can do quite a lot to help them step by step and uh, you know in a, in a steady, planned sort of way. The worksheets for this week have, the questions all look pretty similar. They're basically sets of clocks where there is an analog and a digital clock. And if there's a uh, time indicated on the analog, then you write the digital and vice versa. The later ones mix them up. Um, the first ones show time to the nearest five minutes or in fives. The later ones show times to the nearest minute. And so that's it for this week. I look forward to talking to you next time. Mm -hmm.